What is going on, guys? Sumi here with ThoughtCast, and today I have a very, very requested topic about the five love languages. What are they? What's my take on them? How do they work? How do I tell if someone is in this love language or another one? And what is the game plan I should have when approaching these love languages in my relationship? <laughs> So first and foremost, I want you to understand that the five love languages is from a book by Gary Chapman about, I think it was published around 1990, 1992, 1991, but it was a while ago. And this book is so big in the dating and relationship community, everyone talks about it. And I'm not saying it's bad at all, but I want you to understand that there are certain nuances that you must be aware of when it comes to the five love languages. Let's go through the five love languages just to start. So first you got words of affirmation. This is about people who feel loved when they have compliments, appreciation, encouragement, motivation, and they receive those kind, empathetic words towards them. The second love language is acts of service. Now, this is something where it's more like actions speak louder than words. It's kind of like the opposite of uh, words of affirmation, where someone will care more about what you do for them. Like, if you support them, if you care about them, if you share a post, if you're physically helping them in some way. It's not that they don't care about what you say, but they care more about the acts of service for an individual. The third love language is receiving gifts. Pretty simple, people that like to be surprised, people that like gifts, people that like you to give materialistic things towards them and say, hey, I got this for you. And it's not necessarily the materialism in itself, it's more so the thought and the idea of you taking the time out to give someone something. It could be a small surprise or just a meaningful token to show this person that you're on their mind. Once again, it's not about materialism, it's about the thought that comes behind the gift. Very important to note. The fourth love language is quality time. People that feel loved when you take time out of your day to just spend with them. People that like your attention, people that like your validation, your verification by you spending one-on-one -on -one time with them or maybe in a group setting and just giving them that energy, that attention. And the people that really like this are the ones that like meaningful moments with their partner, that really like to engage in activities and have those deep conversations and just spend those uninterrupted moments with someone they care about. Last but not least is physical touch. And this doesn't mean something sexual. It could be non-sexual. It could be holding a hand. It could be cuddling. It could be touching someone to let them know that you're there. It's the small physical touches and that proximity that allows someone to feel like they're being loved. Here's what I'm going to say. When it comes to the five love languages, a lot of people try to compartmentalize themselves into the five love languages. They say, oh, I like this. I like that. The reality is, Everybody likes everything. It's a combination of this. But where you kind of lie on the spectrum of each one varies on your upbringing, your childhood, your demographics, a lot of confounding variables as to who you are. So some people might like physical touch a lot more. Some people like quality time. And some people like you know acts of service, so on and so forth. So let's backtrack in the love languages. So the first one is words of affirmation. And this might sound bad, but people that are very insecure people that are not sure of who they are, people that have a lot of personality built up in the way that they look like words of affirmation. People that are not necessarily as confident as who they are like words of affirmation. And this isn't a bad thing, but this allows them to feel more encouraged, allows them to feel more cared about. People that want your attention want words of affirmation. On top of this, the quality time is also another one that kind of lines in with words of affirmation. Now, moving on from that, the acts of service is actually the opposite of words of affirmation. This is for people that are very busy, CEOs, entrepreneurs. I love acts of service. That's my love language if I had to have a love language. This is very important for me. If someone can come into my life and make my life easier, that is the best thing that they can do. Someone that has a center of attention type mindset that wants people to kind of cater towards them wants this kind of love. Once again, this is not bad. I'm not here to push out the negatives here, but these are the type of people that cater towards those certain kind of behaviors. Everyone, from my experience, likes receiving gifts. Now, women like this more than anything else, especially women that are more so focused on materialism. Now, I know it's not about materialism, but people that like decorating or having mementos or tokens of you and reminders of you, they love this kind of stuff. People that are into fashion, people that are into interior design, people that are very aesthetic like receiving gifts because then they can place these gifts in their life and they can remember you by them. Next is physical touch. Now, a lot of busy people and CEOs and public figures don't like physical touch out in the open. People that are more so private enjoy physical touch. And it's important for you to understand that physical touch does not mean sexual actions. It just means you physically being there. Physical touch can also be very in line with words of affirmation. If someone is very needy, available, and they want to know that you're there for them, and they're very much insecure in their own nature, they can like physical touch. I know I'm labeling these in a somewhat negative way, but the reality is we are all insecure in some way, shape, or form. We are all a little bit egotistical in some areas. We are all a little bit desiring in some areas of power or control. So you've got to learn where a person is psychologically in order to map out where their five love languages are. Now, there's a lot of debate on this, but there's more than five love languages, and a lot of people argue about this. And, and some examples I'll give out is shared beliefs, relatability, accountability, 
personal growth and the level of growth that they have in their life, these are all love languages. Some people might feel loved by you putting an effort on yourself, by you working out, by you taking care of your business. Some people might feel loved when you actually listen to them and actually implement the things that they said, accountability. Some people might feel loved and express love by having shared beliefs with you, by showing their similarity in who you are. So I don't want you to compartmentalize yourself in the five love languages, but I really want you to take these ideas and really research on how the five love languages are. The big idea from this whole book is that not everybody expresses love in the same way. Somebody that's very busy could be showing their love by going to work every single day and providing food for their family. Somebody that's at home might not feel that love because they want their husband to be home and want them to spend quality time. It's about you guys communicating, comprehending, and compromising on these ideas of love, where that husband in that scenario understands that, hey, my wife wants me home, so maybe I can take a day off, or maybe I can call her during work. And that wife also understands, hey, my husband shows his love by making sure that we have food coming home every single day, and the lights are on and the bills are paid. That's how he's showing his love. The partnership of human beings is very, very complicated. But if you guys can come together and put aside your differences and learn to understand how you guys demonstrate love, then the relationships turn out a lot better. So all in all, guys, if you ever want to contact me about these love languages and which ones you fall into, you can always contact me down below. Shoot me a DM. Tell me which ones you think your partner is. Let me know if you're having any troubles in your relationships. And that being said, I'll see you until next time. Zoomy out.